Verbally Effective with Ina Esco is an interview-style podcast that intersects art, culture, politics, and entertainment with a Memphis focus. Each week, I'm joined by a featured guest with roots in Memphis. Verbally Effective delves into each guest's personal journey to uncover the incredible stories fueling their purpose, the highs and lows of their pursuits, and how through their passion, they are moving the culture forward. Be sure to follow Verbally Effective and Ina Esco on Instagram. Also, download the Verbally Effective podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play Music. Don't forget to check out the website and submit to be a guest at verballyeffective.com. Greetings, greetings, and welcome to another edition of the Verbally Effective Podcast. I'm your host, your double E, Ina Esco. You know, this podcast intersects art, culture, politics, entertainment with a Memphis focus. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the pod. Also, subscribe to the Ina Esco YouTube channel so you can check out the visuals. Yo, you know, the Grizzlies in the playoffs, right? So I got my boy up in here from 92.9 FM ESPN, Mr. John Martin, so he can come and talk his ish today. That's right. That's right. How are you, John? I'm here. I made it. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for yes. having me. You know what? Um, I listen to you guys all the time. Um, I told you that um, I had your co-host on the podcast very early on. Yeah. You guys know your stuff. Well, we have to. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, and if you don't. You know, <laughs> they gonna let they'll you know. Sniff it out. Yeah, it's a you know that's the thing about Memphis, man. You you know you just can't fake it in Memphis. So right. Yeah. Um. You have to. You have to know what you're okay. doing. Okay. So let's start at the beginning, John. What part of Memphis are you from? Oh, it sounds like a long story. It, it, well, I mean, we bounce around a little bit. What? Where would you consider? Uh, like Sycamore View and Macon. What part of Memphis would you Isn't consider? That, that's Raleigh. Bart. Bartlett. Yeah, it's but it, it's not technically. It's like right there on the line between Bartlett and it's like the out that like furthest edge of Memphis. Mm -hmm. I guess that's where I probably spent the majority of my childhood. So, mm -hmm. you know, but like I'm not. It ain't like a Bartlett thing though. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I, I went to White Station. I didn't go to Bartlett. You know okay. what I mean? So. I, I just I'm I'm from White Station like that's how I look at it. White that's, Station. Yeah, I'm a White Station high school product. So okay, so let me know what John Martin was the young John Martin was into over there at White Station. I'm, I'm still young. Okay, I mean, I, I don't you young. know I don't I don't look at it like I you know that was a <laughs> a past version of me now. I mean, you try to put you. me in the grave, man. Okay, the high school John. Wild as hell. Wow, you was wild. Yeah, yeah, wild as hell. Okay. Um, I mean, I didn't know any better, right? None of us did. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, I was like, I have a younger brother, so mm. I like to look at it as I was like the the trial for my parents, you know, yeah. for my mom. Usually she was a single the first mom. star. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, all the wild shit I was doing, by the time my brother came, you know, he was, you know, 14, 15, 16. She was like, she was conditioned. She was a G. So he got to do basically all the shit I didn't get to do, which I always resented. But, yeah, I mean, I was, you know, I was hanging out with idiots, you know. I mean, we were mm -hmm. running around, you know. I mean, just doing stuff that that teenagers do, you know. I'm gotcha. hanging out, you know. Had the old. Um, <laughs> the old I'm, try, I'm trying to think, like, because this is going to be like, you know, this is because it's out there, you know. So I got, I got to have a little bit of a feel. <laughs> but yeah, just doing, doing, you know, the typical teenage stuff. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So, were you heavily into sports in high school, or did it happen later? Yeah, I, uh, I, I loved the Tigers. I loved. Okay. Memphis basketball, man. Like it was, uh, it was addictive because, like, you just a it was good. They were good. I mean, they were just always in the mix. They were always going to the Elite Eight to you know making a tournament run. And also, I just loved the fact that they had dudes from Memphis. Like they yeah. kept a dude from Memphis, whether it was Antonio Burks, whether it was Sean Williams. You know, like, and then I remember I was, you know, 16, 17 during the 07, 08 run. Yeah. And they were just, they were gutter, man. I mean, yeah, that's C the Calipari yeah, days, right? Yeah, you had, you had CDR, you had Joey Dorsey, Antonio Anderson. Like, these were not decorated dudes, mm -hmm. right? They were not highly ranked recruits coming out of high school, but they were just dogs out there. And then you add D. Rose to the mix. Oh, D. You know, Rose, the D. Rose tour in Memphis. Yeah. That was something serious. Yeah, so, <clears throat> I mean, that's that's where, like, my love of, of all of this kind of came into. Mm -hmm. Uh, to existence. I just I loved watching them play basketball and 
you know, and win. I mean, that was the most yeah. fun part about it. Is that they just they won all the, they won thirty games a year, four years. Oh in a yeah, row. they were cold. Like they were it's cold. hard to it's hard to think about that like happening. I mean, and it probably won't happen again. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't think so under uh, the new. Um tutelage of uh, Penny? It, well, I don't know if it's going to even happen in college ba- like ba- college basketball yeah. itself. It's just so hard, man, because mm-hmm. there's, especially now in the age of the transfer portal where guys don't have to sit out, you know? Yeah. It's harder and harder to find an edge, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so I, I four straight years of 30 wins, I don't believe, it, whether it's Memphis or Kentucky or Kansas, I just don't see or it happening again. Right. Yeah, it, was, it, was a, it was a hell of a time. Okay, so... I mean, you loved it so much. You attended University of Memphis. What was your major? Uh, journalism. Okay. Journalism. Yeah. Uh, I, I I thought I wanted to be a writer, right? Mm-hmm. And I still do. I still do contribute to the Daily Memphian, but uh, I didn't even go to. I didn't. I didn't even visit Memphis. Mm-hmm. I didn't even. I didn't. I didn't know what the cameras looked like. You just knew you were going. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like crazy. Like I will never. Like I won't. My, you know, I have a 14 month old daughter, and whatever the world looks like in in 17 years, like we're going on trips. Like mm-hmm. we're gonna see. Do they have what you want, right? Because they might not. <laughs> right. You know, you might not like the vibes on campus. You might. I didn't care. You know, I was just like I was raised on Memphis basketball. I'm going to Memphis, and mm-hmm. I'll just figure out the rest later. And that's exactly what I did. Did you intern in radio or TV? Mm-mm. I never did anything like that. Okay. I uh, I didn't take a single broadcast class. I didn't. I didn't think I wanted to do this. You okay. know, it wasn't even like on my radar. Wow. It didn't come on my radar until you know I was probably I I, I was graduating college mm-hmm. and there was an opportunity at ninety two nine to produce, which it was framed. It was branded to me as yeah you'll be producing, but you'll have a speaking role. Which I was like <laughs> all right, like I'm in. You know, I just graduated right. college yesterday. Like I'll do it. You know, for next to nothing. So. From there, I was like, damn, this is actually, like, fun because mm-hmm. I get to come on, on air and just be myself and mm-hmm. just, like, bullshit and talk about sports and also, like, not sports sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I really enjoyed that piece of it. Um, and then from there, like, you know, what they don't tell you is, like, you can like you can make money in radio. Like, you can you can endorse things. You mm-hmm. can you can have commercials. You can, like, you can become a re- – you can become a brand with the public in a way – that you just can't when you're writing, you know. Yeah. When you're writing, you're they're, they're they're just words that people read, mm-hmm. you know. But when people hear you speak, yeah, it's like they feel like they know you, That's you know. True. And and they don't. Mm-hmm. Like, they think they do. They think they do. <laughs> they don't, but they think they do. And that and that is like that is the that is the the beauty of, you know. Radio is a is a you know it, it's an ancient medium, right? Mm-hmm. It, most markets. It's it's not the go to, um, you know. Not these days. But in a place like Memphis, mm-hmm. where there's you know, a we're probably twenty to thirty years behind the rest of the world, but, <laughs> but b there is like such a passion, you yeah. know, for the things that are happening in our community. Like we in Memphis, we want to hear from Memphis. Yeah. You know, what I mean, we want to hear about our community from people who are here in our community, and so I think radio here sets up a unique opportunity to do that. And you and you when you started in that producer role, you were under a legend, right? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Talk about that That's too. That's nice of you to say. <laughs> yeah, well, Jeff. You know him personally. No, huh? he's yeah, he's uh, I was talking to him on the way down here. No, okay. he is a legend, man. Um and he's a brilliant brilliant person. Um not just in 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 the world of media, but in in like he was, you know, <clears throat> he was really a father figure to me. And a lot of my low personal moments, he was like the guy who I really leaned on, you know, and and asked for advice on whether that's like my marriage, whether that's, you know, contract disputes, whether that's, you know, arguments maybe with Jason. Like I walked out of the radio show last week. Well, why? Uh, you know. It, the difference of opinion? Well, I mean, yeah, but but also like, man. You do this stuff every day for six mm-hmm. years, and like sometimes you're just in a shitty mood, mm-hmm. you know, and 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 you and you're not supposed to like let that come over, mm-hmm. you know. And I do my best not to, um, but that was a moment where it just did, and I was like, you know what, I'm not finna sit here and deal with this shit. Mm-hmm. Walked out on the and show, and I walked out on the show, but I came back. But you know, I called Jeff. My point is, I called Jeff. I I drove. I got. I, I didn't just like get in my parking lot and drive circles around the building you know like I left I was gonna I don't I didn't know where I was gonna go but I knew I was like I was gone I wasn't you know interested in being there anymore and and Jeff was like look I did this back in the day you know because Jeff's been doing it forever Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And he's like, just go back, apologize. It's not the end of the world. Things are going to be fine. And I did. And things are fine. Uh, but, yeah, Jeff was, uh, Jeff was a guy who really, like, I'm not here sitting with you if not for him. Yeah. You know, when, uh, when I graduated college, um, like the day I graduated college, he was, he was really angling for me to be his co-host. Not his producer, but his co-host. They didn't want to pay me to be his co-host, right? They're like, we don't know who he is. He, he's 21 years old. We're not going to pay him to be a co-host. We'll pay him to be a producer. Well, then, so we start talking about money for producing, and <laughs> we were haggling over like $10 a day. <laughs> and Jeff was like, if you don't give him that extra $10 a day, right. I'm walking. Yeah. Not only... Like there will be no me if you don't give this kid ten dollars a day. He had to pull the card, huh? and he did. And and for him to do, it gets crazy. Yeah, it's 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 like only something a maniac would do. Yeah, but he believed in you. But that you know, that or he was just in you know in a mood that day. I don't know. Yeah. But but it's hard to imagine somebody else putting their. He didn't need the money, but like it would have been nice, right? Yeah, to have a whole second job, and he was willing to put that on the line for a snot nosed twenty yeah. one year old kid. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I am uh, forever indebted to that man yeah. and, and for a variety of things, but, but yeah. more, most importantly for helping me have any chance in this industry at all. Yeah. And you know what, John? It's truly a blessing to have a live, everyday radio show in Memphis with so much syndication going on. Do you guys ever feel, you know, threatened with the the syndications, the competitions, all of the digital platforms? How do you feel about this space? Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, it's 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 more competitive than it's ever been. <laughs> I mean, because yeah. it's like you're not just competing. Like, on paper, I'm competing with radio stations, right, because it's a PPM system. Yeah. People have meters, and, and, and the way that, you know, I'm, you know, perceived in my building or I'm sold or I'm, bon- I'm getting my bonus checks mm-hmm. is based on how many people with these on their belt loops, which I've never met anybody. You've right. probably never met anybody, no. right? It's just not something that's very common. Um, they determine my fate on paper, but... There's the Pat McAfee show, which is massive, that airs on YouTube. Mm-hmm. That's not a direct competitor with me, mm-hmm. right? That Because he doesn't have a meter and he doesn't care about a meter. But I might have somebody that does have a meter that decides, you know what? I don't want to listen to radio. I want to listen to Pat McAfee on YouTube today. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a million other things. I don't worry so much about podcasts, right? Mm-hmm. Because I think radio and podcasts are two separate entities completely. They are. You know, podcasts are something that, you know, it, it, it can't, it's in a way it can't be current events because you're listening to it later, mm-hmm. right? So it's in a way it's, it's a, it's a time capsule. You know, you go to radio to hear what's happening right now. Yeah. You guys are live. And right. Direct. Yeah. So it's like, all right, the Grizzlies beat the Warriors last night. Mm-hmm. Let's hear what they have to say about it. You yeah. know, like that's where you go. And I also think, there's just something to be said for the element of live. Mm-hmm. Like I walked out on the show last week. Right. That During would not have show. that hit different <laughs> because it was happening live. Exactly. It would have not felt the same if it was like a recorded. Yeah. You know, everybody had time to think about what they're gonna say. Mm-hmm. You know, that shit was raw and uncut. And so I think that is the advantage that radio still does have, and that's yeah. why people still listen to it for the most part. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, the competition is, and, and it's, and it's not. Like, my, I don't even view it like, I, you know, we're all kind of fighting for, for years here and eyes and everything. And in that sense, it, it is just the, the competition has never been stiffer. Now, other than you guys being in the studio during your live show, do you all um, leverage social media? How do you mean? Do, do you, like, you know, maybe get a, do a reel while you're doing it live, go live, you know, utilize social media during the show? Yeah, I think you you have to. I mean, I think for us, like we will have, um, you know, we will have people who tweet us, who react to segments. Okay. You know so what I mean? Talking directly to yeah. The so I mean, we, it's like a it's a whole interactive. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. a whole interactive deal. Uh, you know, it has to be. You know, because somebody might send you something like information wise, right? Mm-hmm. Information is king. I think so much of what we do mm-hmm. is is in, like information is the premium. You know, exactly. so somebody might direct message me and I've had this happen like, oh, I was just at uh, I was at the bar and, and uh, I heard James Wiseman is leaving. You know, this was four years ago or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that it was true, you know, and sure. that's and that's all, you know, that's all what you cultivate mm-hmm. on <clears throat> on social. So it's yeah. a community, right? It's a community that you try to build. Mm-hmm. It's fleeting, right? Because Very fleeting. It, it just is. <laughs> but and that's what you strive to do. I'm glad you mentioned um, the news cycle because with sports, it's just 
so much going on with the sports and the in the you know news cycle for sports. Where do you get your information from? I know you glued to that phone, John, mm-hmm. but like, what are you? tuned into to get your information well i mean it, it depends right like so if i'm if it's like you know memphis related i'll have like people that i trust and that i can call on you know mm-hmm. but if it's you know national or you know in these times international like i gotta see like oh shit what putin say today you know what <laughs> right. i mean like are we are we, are we inching closer to a nuclear war here i mean it's all on twitter you know it is everything's on twitter so i'm always pretty much and that's how we connected right mm-hmm. I mean that that's like, you know, that's my new. That's how and I you text. Have, you have a huge following on Twitter. I pay for that. You pay no, for I that. No, I don't pay for that. <laughs> I should. I should pay. You know what I should do though? What I'm Wait. thinking about doing, like more so for my TikTok. Cause my TikTok is whack as hell. Mm-hmm. I can't figure out the TikTok algorithm. I might. You talk about how, like the younger me. Like I actually might be too old to figure you out. You just TikTok. gotta post often. I'm on it. And I have posted. You watching? You probably be going down that rabbit hole when you're on there. Oh yeah, because it's easy to oh. do. But you need to be posting your own videos. I en- I enjoy TikTok content. I'm mm-hmm. not so good at you know curating it or whatever. Yeah. But if I was like, if I want to like, I'll like, I'll give away like a jaw jersey. Like, but you gotta follow me on TikTok and you gotta follow. That's you know, how you gotta do you it. You know what I mean? Like that's buying followers. Yes. You know what I mean? It's a but 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 a lot of accounts do that. That's you know? marketing. Yeah, it is, and it's one of those costs that you're willing to eat. Yeah. If it, you know, builds. So I've thought about doing it. I don't need it on my Twitter, you know, like you mentioned, mm-hmm. like my Twitter, my Twitter following is fine. Like I'm not hurting Yes, there. it is. But, but, you know, I got uh, like Instagram, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I got to do. You know, my Instagram post is. More pictures. I, I've been trying to post my daughter like, you know, she's the, she's the gold nugget. Um, she's beautiful. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm going to do something like that. Probably I'm okay. going to get like a, you know, let Ja win the finals. Right. Because mm-hmm. that's where this is headed. And that's uh, where we hit it. And then uh, and then we'll figure out how to build that community there. OK. I'm glad you brought up Ja Morant, because this is what I've been wanting to ask you. Um, what are your thoughts on the impact that Ja Morant has had with the Grizzlies and Memphis itself? I mean, I don't think there's anything we've ever seen like mm-hmm. it. <laughs> I mean, from an athlete perspective, yes, it's it's FedEx. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's FedEx coming to Memphis. Y'all, th- look, the, the moves he made, how he go in yeah. the hole, despite what's in front of him, I'm like, he don't care. Like, no. he's going to go in there and get it. Yeah, I... I <sighs> I really do. I think it's going to, you know, it, you, you, it's going to be one of those things that shapes the history of Memphis mm-hmm. along the likes of FedEx choosing to be headquartered in Memphis. I mean, economically, uh, socially, you know, mm-hmm. culturally. I mean, Ja, and, 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 and he's perfect. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think Memphis could have picked a better face yeah. because he, he, he's not from here. But he you is of tell. here. You can't tell he not from there, right, though. Right, like he, like he might as well. Like you could have caught him at Craigmont. Okay, you, you could have caught him. You know, Raleigh. <laughs> like he's from small town South Carolina, which yeah. I, I, you know, and I know his folks pretty well. I've been around him quite a bit. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it, 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 it's like we're cousins. Like mm-hmm. we might as well be cousins. You know, Memphis and, and Dalzo, South Carolina. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, I think you just cannot overstate. Um, how how meaningful he is and will continue to be. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. Mm-hmm. You know, I think you're talking about a guy who is going to make the Grizzlies a free agent destination, mm. the likes of which he, he's going to force us to redefine the way we think about ourselves yeah. in that way. Like, we would think, man, Grizz can't get nobody in free agency. Watch. 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 Because, Watch. I mean— like there was a story a month ago where Jalen Rose is on ESPN talking about Zion and the Grizzlies. Like it's crazy. Really? Like this shit is crazy. Like that possibility. And that is a direct impact of John Moran. Mm. He is going to make it to where guys want to play with him. Guys want to win with him. Um, you know his whole his whole Nike campaign is mm-hmm. in Memphis, right? Yeah. He, it's you know he's he's not he's not afraid. You know some stars might have the inclination to distance themselves in these spots from their organization, right? Mm-hmm. They might just want to make it about themselves. He don't want to do that. He's going to no. he's going to incorporate Memphis into most of what he does. Mm-hmm. Um and I think that's a hell of a great sign for the city that he 
you know, you can never say never, right? Mm-hmm. But I think the I think the league has changed. Mm-hmm. I think the world is smaller, and I think you can achieve everything you want to achieve in a small market. Take Giannis, for example. Giannis, my son loves Giannis. Giannis, I really believe what's happening in Milwaukee is exactly what can happen in Memphis. Mm. You know, Milwaukee was, you know, they were kind of hitting their head on the ceiling there. You know, they would go to the Eastern Conference Finals, and next year they lose in the semis. You know, they go out and they get Drew Holiday because Drew Holiday wants to play with Giannis. Mm -hmm. And Giannis says, all right, I'm going to sign, you know, a Supermax extension in December of last year. And they win a championship. Mm. And now the whole world's changed for Giannis. He's staying in Milwaukee for the rest of his career, most likely. Mm -hmm. And I think that's... If you're the Grizzlies organization, you're trying to you're trying to replicate exactly what happened in Milwaukee with Giannis. Small wow. market, but a but a superstar, a global superstar decided, you know what, I'm gonna put my roots down here because I believe in the direction and I believe in the community. Mm-hmm. And um, and that's what you're trying to do. Okay. So Grizzlies, other than John Morant, because I know you love him, is there an underdog on a team that don't get enough attention that we should be talking about? An underdog on a team. I mean, you know, the guy that probably, I mean, he's getting love now. Bang. But it is Bang. Yeah, I knew he was going to say Bang. I like Bang. I mean, Bang is like, I mean, I can make an argument that Bang is, is consistently the best scorer for the Grizzlies. He is. You know, he I mean, that work in. Ja had 47 the other night, and Ja can do that. You know, mm-hmm. Ja can ha- he can decide to go for 50 pretty much whenever he wants. But Desmond Bain is, is going to be – I mean, he shoots basically 50% from three. Mm-hmm. And he takes a lot of them. You know, this is not like a guy that takes two threes a game. That's what he does. So he's not he, – he's, at least he wasn't in game two. He wasn't right in game two. Um, but if he's healthy, you know, you're talking about a nucleus of, of Ja, of a three-point marksman, of, you know, if he can stay on the floor, an elite shot blocker in Jaron Jackson Jr. Mm. And then you have – First round picks. You have an expiring contract in Dylan Brooks. Man, Dylan Brooks. Uh huh. Isn't he suspended? He is suspended. Game? Yeah, he won't be out there for game three. Yeah, he won't be out there for game three. He broke the guy's elbow. And that's why. I mean, that's yeah. why he's. Do you think that was a flagrant foul? Well, he broke his elbow, you know? I mean, that's, yeah. that's kind of the, unfortunately, that's the yeah. way the cookie crumbles. He didn't look like he tried to do it. No, he, I don't think he did, right? But, you know, in this situation, like, the dude is not going to play again for the yeah. rest of the season, most likely. So wow. the NBA has got to, like, take a stand on that you know what I mean like Dylan has got to let the guy score that bucket Mm -hmm. you know what I mean like come on dog but yeah, I, you know they could he found the shit out of him they did he He did he did did. I mean yeah he started with Ja and then he was right behind him yeah so that's that's just one of the that's that's the way the the, you know the cookie crumbles but I I still don't like I I think they lose game three because like I think the Warriors are coming back home they're pissed off right They're mad at the way the Grizzlies have been playing. So I'm. We haven't yet seen that sort of trademark Steph Clay game yet. Mm-hmm. I think we see it game three Saturday night, right yeah. in San Francisco. But then I think the Grizzlies win game four. I think we're coming back to Memphis with this thing tied we at two to apiece. Come back. And if you win game three, or excuse me, game five, and you'll be up three two of the series. Mm-hmm. I mean, all you have to do is win one more game at home, and you're yeah. going to the Western Conference Finals against the Phoenix Suns, most likely. So, wow. I mean, it's 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 exciting. So have you been going to the games? Uh, I have not gone to any playoff games for a number of reasons. Um, and, the, and the biggest reason is uh, I have a lot of people who want to go, mm-hmm. right? And we have to – a lot of – some of those people would be in charge of babysitting. Gotcha. So it's one of those things where it's like if we can't take everybody, we probably, you know – I, I'm, I'm not trying to ruffle no feathers in the house. You know what I mean? I got you. So, I got you. So we've, we've been watching on the tube, but we've been having a blast all the same. Yeah, but you know what's what's great about you guys' show? You all, let's just say everybody goes to the game, but they're calling you guys the next day talking oh, yeah. this shit. No, talk, yeah. You know, whoop that trick. Yeah. Get no, crunk. It's, it's, the, it's the best. Like, this is like... This is the best part of Memphis, you know. The, the spring when the Grizzlies are rolling. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember that that run in uh, in 2013 when they went to the Western Conference Finals, like barbecue fest. Isn't barbecue fest coming up? It's it's not this weekend, but next weekend. Yeah, like 
Yeah. If I, you know, in a different life, like this would be like go time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it, it's not anymore. I'll still probably find my way out there on a Thursday or something. But you know, yeah. it takes a lot longer for me it's these days to bounce time. back. Yeah. Daddy and all, yeah, time. it's daddy time, and you know, I'm not the I'm not the spring chicken I used to be. So. Oh, I feel you on that. Me, look, <laughs> me neither. Me it takes, neither. It takes me like 12 hours to bounce back. You know. Okay. Well, John, um, I want you to talk to us about because uh, I did see this on your. Um, bio and I wanted to ask you about it you've never left Memphis mm. why do you love Memphis so much because I think you can do everything you w- want to do here um, and I think that the people here are just like genuine mm-hmm. authentic good people mm-hmm. um, you know it's always like bother me that people like on, on the outside have this perception of memphis you know and it's just so fucked up it's so wrong it's Mm -hmm. so distorted because if you spent a week here Mm -hmm. you know and and a lot of people who come here like you know outside nba people right like nba writers will come from out of town Mm -hmm. and they will just rave they will just rave about the reception they love memphis like it is so warm Mm -hmm. it is such a warm place here in terms of just the vibes and you know look it's a it's a you know, I think it's a progressing city. Mm, you know, I think we've made a lot of, you know, big time strides. Mm-hmm. I believe in this city. You know, I love this city. Yeah. And I've never, I've never had a, I've never had to think I can't accomplish what I want to accomplish here. I've mm-hmm. never had that thought, and I don't think I ever will. Mm-hmm. Um, especially in the world we live in now, right, where everything's remote anyway. So, yeah, I mean, I, I just, I feel like you know, between the people, between. You know, how real this place is. You know, honestly, the cost of living. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, God we can't ignore it's that a, either. It's a great perk. Absolutely. So, you can, you can, you know, you combine all of that. And then, again, also the 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 progress that I truly believe that we are making. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think Memphis has yeah. everything you could ever ask for. We're going through a renaissance right now. I, I think, think so. Memphis. Yeah, I think Memphis could be like, I mean, in time, like, you know, Austin. You know, you see, like, Austin is yeah. one of those, like, you know, cities and, in, in, like, everybody wants to visit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think Memphis could be, I, I don't, like, Nashville, like, irks me. So I don't want to be Nashville. But I want to be a place where, you know, people want to, like, see and check mm-hmm. out. And maybe companies want to move to. Exactly. You know? Like, you know, I mean, what we got to do, you know? I mean, we got to do, do some tax breaks or something, you know? Look, it's a lot of companies, uh, nonprofits, a lot of people that are pushing, like, a lot of college graduates from Memphis to yeah. come back. Yeah. And it, they have a big campaign for that going on right now. Yeah. So I think, you know. Yeah, I mean, I really do. I think, you know, if we just get, like, you know, we have that, uh, what's coming? Isn't it like a uh, like a Ford plan or something? Oh, yeah, there like in a, Mason. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's close enough. Yeah, I mean, that's down go- the street. That's gonna bring some, you know. That's gonna bring some industry. You know, you uh-huh. get a couple more of those. Yeah, and you're really cooking with gas. So yeah, yeah, I think I think it's common for Memphis. I think in 10, okay. 20 years, like it's gonna Memphis is gonna be one of those hot spots. You yeah. know, and the way we talk about. You know, your Austins, unfortunately, your Nashvilles. He said, unfortunately, your Nashvilles. I, I, th- I think Memphis can be in that next wave for sure. Okay. Okay. Well, John Martin, I need you to repeat after me. Mm. Amen. Say man. Amen. Say man. So, Memphis got it in what? What What? what round you think they going to win? Mm. With, with the with the Golden State. I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a, you know what on the show I said they're gonna lose in this round, but I've I've changed my mind since then because I've seen a difference in in the in the approach. Like mm-hmm. they're not. They're not afraid of the Warriors, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna give them. I'm gonna give them a Western Conference Finals appearance. Okay. They're, they're, you know, it's, I don't think anybody's beating Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Chris Paul is just dominating everybody right now, which mm-hmm. is incredible at his age, 37. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna give them a Western. Their second Western Conference Finals appearance. We would love to see that. Oh, it'd be amazing. Yeah. And that's just like this is just the start. Yeah. It is. It's it just because the Lakers are a disaster. The, uh, Chris, the Lakers franchise have just, oh, my God, they're horrible. They should just, they should absolutely be uh, expelled from the league. You know, winning time should be like the last thing we ever have to see with How the Lakers. from LeBron to, to what it has become now? I know, it's sad. And he's part of it, unfortunately. But, yeah, the, like, think about it. Lakers, mess. Sons, eventually Chris Paul's going to retire. That mm-hmm. they, they will be different when he leaves, right? Yeah. You know, Luca and Dallas are about to get swept. You know, Portland's going to blow things up. Utah's going to blow things up. Golden State, 34, 
33, mm-hmm. 30, you know, all those guys are in their mid 30s, early, you know, early mid 30s. That's on the edge here. The mm-hmm. Grizzlies might shut the door on them as we know them. So the Grizzlies are like at the, like, this is like the ground floor. Mm-hmm. Like, this is 1999 Amazon type shit. Boom, you know what I mean? Boom. Like, this is just the beginning of, of what this core is going to do. Mm-hmm. So, it's it's the price has gone up. You can still okay, get in. You can still get in for, for a little bit. For a little bit. <laughs> yes. in, in a few weeks, it's gonna be too late. Indeed, indeed. Well, John Martin, I have enjoyed you on the verbally effective podcast. Uh, verbally effective audience. I need him to let you guys know when you can hear all of this great sports commentary. Yes. Let him know. Yeah, 11 to 2, 929 FM ESPN. Catch me. And we're going to get your followers up. Give them your social media. Yeah, yeah. Give them your TikTok. We we, we need the Instagram, you know, John Martin 929. But it's all the same. TikTok, Instagram, uh, Twitter is John Martin 929. Holla at me. All right. Thank you, John Martin. For yeah, pleasure. Thanks for having me. and talking your ish. I have really enjoyed yeah, you. Yeah, anytime. And we will be tuned in. Maybe we could do some live stuff soon. Yeah, yeah. let me know. I'm, I'm in. I'm going to collaborate. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another edition of the Verbally Effective Podcast. Big shout-outs to the Memphis Grizzlies. You heard what John said. We're going to the Western Conference. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the pod on all social media platforms. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Ina Esco, and I'll see you guys next week. 